I have with me the keys to Yamaha's best looking learner bike. This is a Yamaha XSR 700. It's a heritage inspired naked style bike. And yes, it's learner approved. And personally, I think this is the best looking learner bike they make but I may have just offended anyone who's a fan of the R3 or the R7. And I wanna see if it rides as good as it looks by walking around the features that it comes with and then taking it for a ride and then letting you know if you should consider buying one of these. And then with all that said, my name's Cameron. This is Product Review Cars, but this is a motorcycle review. Let's get into it. So Yamaha is asking just over $13,000 right away for this bike here. It's gonna be on the upper end of a lot of people's learner bike budget. So what do you get? Well, up front you get twin disc brakes and you get Michelin tires wrapped around some cool looking alloy wheels. Now I also like the front mud guard with Yamaha stamped across the front. And I do like the X cross bracing, which looks like it's meant to be reminiscent of the X on the XSR logo. Now you got round LEDs, both front and rear. You also have a round gauge cluster, but you don't have any shroud or windshields around the front so that wind's going to hit you right here. Now I also do like how Yamaha stamped in the metal up top and I also do like how Yamaha's color coordinated the wires and cables to match the black surround that's happening around the handlebars and the front of this bike. Now I also do like these mirrors because they're nice and narrow with the bike they don't go beyond the width of the handlebars all that much and they can be adjusted without needing any sort of allen key so that's very useful. And also they do vibrate a tiny bit but not a whole bunch and not certainly not as bad as they were on the R3. Now your handlebar our controls are nice and simple, there's nothing too complicated here and it's really quite good that Yamaha includes hazard lights on their bikes, I really quite appreciate it, especially for a learner bike. Now what we have here as well is we have a more relaxed handlebar design. We have nice big levers and the brake is adjustable but the clutch isn't. Now in terms of the seat height, it's 835 millimeters high, so it is one of the higher learner bikes you'll get in terms of actually sitting on this thing. And so for taller riders this will be a bit more appealing and for shorter, shorter riders this thing isn't going to be so great. But if you're a bit short, should be a problem and if you're just in between it will be the perfect size so as you can see here jumping on I feel like I have a nice riding position it's nice and relaxed thanks to these handlebars except I do find that the rest pedals for your foot pegs down below feel like they go into my calf a little bit when I'm standing up so ergonomically it feels like I want to shuffle my feet forwards which can feel a little bit more unstable than putting them out naturally in line with my hips so that's just something that is annoying me a tiny bit on this design. But moving on, we have flexible indicators both front and rear, so if anyone brushes past them or you accidentally drop the bike, these shouldn't snap off, which I really like, rather than being super rigid and easy to break. I also like the naked design of this bike, so you can see everything going on in here. I especially love the mesh around here, and I also love the exhaust guard. It looks really nice and old school, and it also gives this thing a bit more visual flair, especially the surround near your leg up here on the top of the engine. Now this is Yamaha Yamaha's familiar 655cc CP2 motor that we tested in the Yamaha R7. Now the thing is, Yamaha made this bike sound better than the R7, I'm just going to say that out front. So the thing is that this thing sounds better stock, I don't know what they've done, maybe it's a shorter exhaust or something like that because this thing sounds just more grumblier, more aggressive and just really suits the characteristic of this bike as more of an old school feel rather than sounding a bit smoother and a bit more quieter than the R7. But of course you can always go aftermarket to make these things sound louder. And now, yes, I've already tested this motor, but I'm really keen to see how this thing feels in this ergonomic setup and with this setup that the XSR offers. Now, what's also worth noting is that the suspension setup is actually connected to the engine itself. So that's quite interesting in terms of, you know, being compact and also Yamaha reckons this helps with handling and riding dynamics. So yes, again, I'll test that in just a moment. Now, the tank design is fantastic. I really think this really makes the bike. I love the livery, but I think the black and gold setup that you can get up as an option, it looks better. So you can either choose this white setup or you can go for the black livery and I think the black livery just looks a tiny bit more modern but if you're looking for that old school cool then you can't go wrong with this livery here. Now the fuel filler cap looks great I love the studs around it I also love the studs that run up and down the tank and I also do like there's a little plastic piece here so the fuel filler cap isn't going to knock and chip away at the paint here on the tank and I do like the XSR logo here as well. Now we do have some passenger pillion pegs here as you can see so yeah they are there for if you have a pillion passenger but if you know if you're on your L's and P's you 
can't carry any one on the back. So you can just remove these quite easily with two bolts there. And if you plan to keep the bike afterwards and want to carry people on the back, that just goes not nice and easy. So I appreciate how easy these are to remove to create a cleaner looking bike. Now moving towards the back, we do have a rear mud guard, which looks great. Love the studs on here and also do love that rear LED. And then I also do like the finish around the actual license plate design. It doesn't really feel like this bike needs a tail tidy and looks great stock instead of one of those longer ones you'll find on the R3 and R7. What I really like about Yamaha is that they have very useful screens. So this screen here is just a nice contrasted screen, but it can be a bit hard to read in harsh reflections, but overall I've been able to read this in most conditions. Now across the top here we have our indicator lights for everything you need to know, like neutral and our indicators and high beam and other maintenance issues. But then we also have our revs which run across the top. We have our gear selector and let us know which gear we're in. And we also have our speed in a giant uh, font, which is great. So it's really easy to see at a glance how fast you're going and what gear you're in. Now below we have our trip information, which at the moment is displaying time, but using the little controls on the handlebar, you can change that information and see everything from trip info to your fuel consumption to temperatures as well. So this has been very useful at a glance and certainly more useful than my Ducati Monster from 2012. Now here we have our fuel gauge as well and I really enjoy having a bike with a fuel gauge. I know it sounds weird to say that, but yes, this has everything you need for a learner bike. Now what's good as well is that if you don't plan on using the button on the handlebars, you also have buttons here to change everything you need quickly down on the trip info. I'm not sure why that's included. I'm guessing it's just a bit of a part spin thing to have the hard buttons there and on the handlebars, but nonetheless, you have an additional set of buttons to go through your trip info. But let's talk about what's going on underneath the seat because this thing actually has a bit more going to it than meets the eye. Well, first of all, let's talk about the actual seat design. I love the leather finish stitching and the also suede material around the back. And also what's cool is you have XSR 700 stamped on the back, just really nicely done, clean, looks great. But then you also have this loop on top to help you with a bit more practicality and then in terms of practicality yeah you're going to want to carry that extra toothbrush or your underwear in your jacket or in a backpack because this really has no under seat storage whatsoever so if you use your key to use the key slot underneath the seat just pops off like this and you have a neatly presented toolkit with some allen keys screwdriver and a wrench but then underneath you also have a little pouch for some documents and another piece of tool yeah you have that underneath the seat which is great but what i found a bit disappointing is that upon opening this thing um, there was already a snapped rubber band so yeah I would just suggest uh, maybe checking these before you take delivery of your bike. And so yeah, apart from having the same rear tire width as the learner version of the R7, there isn't really much extra to discuss about this bike. It's a pretty bare bones bike and what you see is what you get. So let's see how this thing rides. Now I'm gonna be upfront. This bike is my favorite Yamaha learner approved motorcycle they offer here in Australia. And that's because I think the CP2 motor fits right at home here on this type of bike compared to something like the Super Sport, which feels like it needs the four cylinder or something just a little bit more smooth. Here, that large displacement 655cc CP2 inline twin feels amazing to ride around on. It's got a bit of a funny characteristic, so it does feel like a traditional inline twin, but it's not as aggressive as an L twin like I had on my Ducati Monster. So for daily riding, it's really smooth down low at low speeds. And when you're trying to maneuver around cars in traffic, it's a really nice engine, especially in this bike. Now, I was really liking the ergonomics on this bike as well. You're sitting more upright, you have better visibility. It feels like you have better control over the bike straight away. There's not really much of a learning curve, especially if you're new to riding. So thanks to that bigger displacement motor, it feels like you have plenty of power. And so if you're a taller or bigger rider, this bike will be a great starting point because of that, because you feel like you're a bit more cramped on something like the R3 or the R7. This feels like the perfect bike if you like the idea of going on longer rides. It feels far more comfortable for longer trips and it feels like something I could just, you know, enjoy on a weekend or, you know, just drive into work casually. It doesn't really feel like I have to prepare my body or feel like I'm crouching down or going to be low down or anything like that. I feel very comfortable at home right on the XSR 700. Now, additionally, I don't really know what's all too different between this bike and the R7's 
exhaust system, but this bike just sounds a whole lot better when you're riding, and I really enjoyed the stock sound of this bike, so it made it quite fun straight away to ride compared to the R7. But keep in mind, this is the type of bike that I enjoy riding. Many people prefer something like an R3 or an R7 because they like that sport bike feel and something that's you know gonna be a bit more aggressive, a bit more engaging, but this sort of is a nice in-between, and I like these types of bikes like the Ducati Monster, obviously the XSR, and then if you wanna go into the big versions of these bikes, something like a Ducati Diablo or even the XSR 900. Those bikes really appeal to me, so that's why I really enjoyed riding this bike. And heading through corners, I really felt like you could lean a lot more in this bike. You can sort of get your body a bit more off the bike itself, make the most of that bigger rubber out the back. And then when you got on the throttle, it was just so much fun because it sort of feels like it want to push you off the bike just a tiny bit, thanks to that larger motor. But then as you get going, you tuck yourself in, you sort of prep for the next corner. It's got excellent flow. And I think this bike is just a whole lot of fun to own and ride. If you're looking for that modern retro type riding experience, I really think that this bike offers it. And thank goodness it's a learner approved bike because I would really enjoy riding this thing for a few years until I went to something with a bigger displacement. And yeah, the only real downside is obviously the lack of a windshield for those longer highway trips. If you're making those frequently, it's gonna be a bit fatiguing on your arms. And then as well, if you like more aggressive riding styles or you wanna go to the track, for example, this bike's just not gonna be as suitable as something like the R7. But if those two things don't really bother you or aren't really applicable, then this bike is an excellent starting point if you want a bigger displacement, fun to ride, and also really good looking modern learning motorcycle. Now look, I can't convince you that this is the best learner bike you can buy because everyone has different tastes. So like the other bikes I've reviewed before, if you like that super sport style design, then the R3 and R7 are gonna be more your type. But to be honest, as a learner bike, I really think the XSR is a fantastic one to pick because it's far more approachable in terms of its ride and its design. And I really, really enjoyed riding this around the city. But then yes, also on these twisty bits of road, I found I was far more confident in being able to tackle those corners. I found this bike to be a great sort of Swiss army knife type bike. It was awesome for cruising, it was great to look at, but yes, also fantastic to ride, not just from cafe to cafe, but also out on the back road. This bike turns heads, it's easy to ride, it's a great bike to live with, and it really doesn't feel like it's 180 kilo weight. So I think if you're looking for an entry into the bike world and you think the MT line looks a little too futuristic, well, the XSR is for you. And it's a bike that's really gonna deliver smiles and really gonna make you love riding and wanna keep riding rather than getting a bit exhausted and going, look, I'm kind of sick of it. The Yamaha's learner range is fantastic, but I really think the XSR 700 is a shining star in their lineup. Now, thank you so much for watching this product review, cars, motorcycle review. If you wanna see more of these, let me know by liking this video and leaving a comment down below. If you have any questions about this bike, I'll be happy to answer them for you down there as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.